Hey everybody, Jordan Paris here. And in this video, I'm gonna be going over SOPs, that is standard operating procedures made easy. How to write clear and concise instructions so that you can replace yourself in your business sooner rather than later. Or at the very least, offload a lot of the admin work and fulfillment that goes on in your agency so that you can focus, you now have time to focus on the needle moving activities that actually move your business forward so that you can work on your business, not in your business. There's a difference. And SOPs are really the first step to removing yourself from operations. So we're gonna be going over the structure of an SOP in this video. The first thing is that I like to have a library that's not in Google Docs, right? You can use Notion, you can use Airtable, that's what this is. Uh, really, something that integrates with your current project management system where you can quick just attach an SOP to a particular deliverable in your agency, uh, that's gonna be your best option. So if you're using ClickUp, I would go ahead and create my SOP and training library on ClickUp. If I'm using Airtable for project management, I would uh, go ahead and then create a learning management system on Airtable that has my SOPs in there. So let's go through the structure of this SOP and every SOP. The first step is the title. Uh, and that's really just a descriptive title of what the SOP is about. It could start with how to or with the verb ING, right? Making SOPs. I could have called that uh, for this particular title for this SOP right here. I said how to make an SOP in Airtable. I could have said making SOPs in Airtable, either or, uh, whatever you prefer. Next part, the next component of the SOP is the vision. This is where you quickly describe the scope, when this task and process will happen, uh, and how often this task or process will occur. Now, next is the resources needed. Basically, what do you need to do this? Uh, if it's an SOP about uh, accounting and categorizing transactions in QuickBooks, well, obviously you would put QuickBooks as the resources needed here. Uh, so you would write that in resources needed. The next, and this is a really important part, make this super clear and concise. Make this foolproof. The definition of done. Well, how do we know this SOP? How do we know this task is done? Well, you write that in the definition of done so everybody's on the same page. The step-by-step -step overview. This is where a lot of the magic happens. Most of the magic happens in the video overview. We'll get there in a second, but a step-by-step -step overview here, you're going to describe all the steps in the process. Try to be as detailed as possible so that anyone who reads this SOP can carry out the task or process. There's a reason why 16 year olds can run a McDonald's basically by themselves uh, because they have very clear and concise instructions, foolproof instructions. That's what you want to make your SOP library uh, foolproof, really. And, and when you have all of these components of your SOP, including that definition, done the step by step overview, the loom video, it's quite foolproof. Lastly, not lastly, but next, you've got your video overview basically just going to record a quick loom video of yourself going through the whole process from start to finish. Pretty simple. Uh, and we have those fields. We don't have a, a video for this particular SOP, but you would place, um, place that link in the video overview field. Uh, and then the status of the SOP. Uh, we have several different statuses that we mark our SOPs as, uh, cause we encourage people to, even if it's just a half baked SOP, um, that you're just kind of throwing in the system and it's not really done yet, just throw it in there anyway. Even if it's only 20% of the way done, just mark it as under construction. It's better. 20% is greater than 0%. Imperfect action is the name of the game here when it's you know, in terms of creating SOPs. So next is the department. Which department is this SOP most relevant to? Right? Who ought to know how to do this? And we have some guidelines here for, to help people uh, as to, to decide what department, which department this SOP is most relevant for. So there you have it. Those are the components of an SOP. Another few nice to have things are 
when you created the SOP, when the SOP was created, and then uh, another field where you can see when the SOP was last updated so that people know, you know, how, how relevant is this? Or is this like a five-year-old SOP that uh, really doesn't have much relevance to our business anymore? It's just very helpful to see when the SOP was last updated. So at this point, you understand what goes into the making of a standard operating procedure. And now what we're going to do is actually we're going to build it live right here, right now. So I'm going to click add an SOP right here in my learning management system. And the first thing that I'm going to do is, of course, I'm going to title it. And this one, let me think for a second. We're going to call this creating a task in task master from a slack message oh yeah all caps title case the vision here okay so the context when you want to turn a slack message into a task master task and task master for us by the way is just a fancy way to say to-do list we have a, a task master system anyhow resources needed uh, nothing really right here definition of done task the slack message has made its way to some ones to no someone's personal task master someone's personal to-do list okay and now the step-by-step -step overview uh, what I like to do here is I'll write out as much of the step-by-step -step overview as I can right here and then I will record the video overview and during the video overview, the Loom video, I'll just go line by line. I'll reference the SOP line by line. Like, okay, we're going to do step one right now. Now we're going to do step two. Now we're going to do step three. You just want to make it as foolproof as possible. So I will write here, okay. First thing that you're going to do is... Let me see real quick. Go to Slack. Uh, and then I can just, yep, hit more actions on a message. Push to Zapier. Okay. Hover over a message in Slack. Hover over the message in Slack that you want to turn into a task and then click the three dots for more actions okay and then we're going to do push to Zapier and then let's see what else we got here push to Zapier zap to trigger new task from slack message okay under zap to trigger Select the, what's that called? New task from Slack message. New task from Slack message option. Uh, and what I like to do here is italicize the names of things to make that very clear. Or you can put it in quotation marks, whatever format you prefer. And then I'll go back to here. See, what I'm kind of doing here is, well, 
I'm doing it while I'm doing the step-by-step overview so that if, look, if I were to just try and pull off the step-by-step overview from memory, I might get 80% of it. And then when I go and do the video overview, the loom video for the SOP, I'll realize, oh crap, well, I forgot like a few things here and that kind of messes up the SOP video. So this is helpful to do, um, to kind of do it when you're writing the step-by-step overview. So I'll click that and then additional text. Yeah. So we got to, that's the next step in the process right here. Nope. In the additional text field, write the name of the person you would like the task to go to. And then I'll write a little note here. Note that the name you type here has to be exactly the way it appears in the team member, rather in the directory in team hub. Otherwise, uh, in this case, the automation will not fire at all. Just keeping the format clean here. Additional text. Okay. So now we're going to actually record the video. And I'm going to do that right here, right now. Hey everybody, Jordan here from Zeus. And in this video, we're going to be going over a standard operating procedure called creating a task in Taskmaster from a Slack message. Now, this is really cool. You can basically take any Slack message in our entire workspace and you can turn that into a personal to-do that goes to your or anybody else's personal Taskmaster. So it, this can be really helpful in project management. You know, if we're talking about something that we need to do for a particular project, you can just go ahead and take that message and instead of putting it on your to-do list manually, you can just push it to the Taskmaster through the use of this automation, which we're gonna go over how to use today. Um, you can just take that message and put it directly on your to-do list without really having to, to do anything and do task switching and you know change tabs and all that short, sort of stuff. So super efficient process, wide number of applications as well. So as usual, we're just gonna go over here the step-by-step -step overview and we're gonna take it step-by-step, -step, one through five in this case. So the first step is we're gonna hover over the message in Slack that we wanna turn into a task. So I'll just go right into Slack right here. And the next step, uh, I'm actually going to go back here. We're going to get the next two or three steps here. We're going to click the three dots once we've hovered over that message, uh, under, over the message that we want to turn into a task. Hover over the three dots, or click the three dots rather, for more actions. That's the text you'll see when you hover or when you hover over those three dots. And then we will push to Zapier. So let's go there right now. So hover over the message, more actions and then push to Zapier. And then I'm gonna go back to our handy SOP right here. So number four, under zap to trigger, select the new task from Slack message button option. So we're gonna go back, choose an option, new task from Slack message. And then the last step, and this is the most important part, very easy process up until this point. And this part's very easy as well. It's just that there's a lot of room for error right here. So you want to be super careful. Number five, in the additional text field, you have to write the name of the person that you would like to assign the task to. This is the task owner. And this is a very important note to make that you've got a triple check. You've ensured you have spelled the person's name correctly, exactly as it appears in our directory in the team hub. Otherwise, 
the automation is just not going to fire. Uh, and it's going, this, it might get lost in the cracks. You know, you might forget, you might not realize the automation didn't fire. Uh, and that's unfortunate. So you've got to triple check this. Uh, and really a, a good step after this, maybe a sixth step would be to check to make sure that the task did end up on the person's task master. So anyhow, we are going to go here right now and we're going to go into Slack and I'm just going to write uh, Jordan Paris because I want, I would like to assign this to myself and then I'll hit the push button right here and bam, what that will do is put that right on my personal to-do list. So here it is, follow up with John Smith with myself as the task owner. Uh, and then there's a link to the Slack message. So if you maybe wrote some notes, you know, if there's like, if you, if there's a, a thread of notes in that message, right? So a message, and then there's threaded replies, you can go and reference those threaded replies pretty easily just by uh, opening up this link to the original message right here. So there you have it, my friends. This is creating a task in Taskmaster from a Slack message. Super helpful. Have fun with it. And until next time, be well. Bye. Okay, so we're done with the video overview. Uh, and so what I'll do once I cut it up, uh, cause obviously I'm kind of recording two videos in one right, right here, uh, it's getting pretty meta. Uh, I'm recording a video on how to do an SOP. And then I'm a re recording an SOP in the middle of that video on how to do an SOP. So again, getting pretty meta. I've got to cut up this and put the link in later, which I will do. But for now I will finish this up and assign. Uh, the department, you know, which department is this SOP most relevant for? Um, for this one, it'll be the entire team. So all departments active. That's how we know it's a, you know, active SOP. That's another cool thing. Um, I would have something like this for a, a field like this, for all of your SOPs, something to mark, whether it's active or inactive, because some SOPs are going to become outdated in your business. And then SOP status right here, I'll mark it as complete. And then I will hit create. And there is my awesome standard operating procedure. So there you have it. That is SOPs made easy, how to write clear and concise instructions so that you can replace yourself in your business, replace yourself in fulfillment sooner rather than later. Thanks for watching. Have a great day. Bye.